Welcome to another edition of RCE. I'm your host, Brock Palin. And once again, I have Jeff Squires from Cisco Systems and the Open MPI Project. Jeff, thanks for putting this one together. Hey, no problem, Brock. As, uh, this one's about MPI. It's something I work with uh, all day, every day. So this is near and dear to my heart. Yeah, so I spend a lot of my time as a sysadmin working with MPI and making it work. And it can sometimes be a crazy beast, but actually I think it makes a lot of people's lives in parallel computing a lot easier. Um, if Jeff, could you give us a little bit of background on MPI once we get started here? But first, I'd like to introduce our two guests. We have Bill Gropp and Rich Graham, both of who sit on the MPI forum with you, Jeff, I understand, and are central to the updates to MPI that are recently coming and in the future. Well, hi, this, I'm Bill Gropp. I am at the University of Illinois now, and I also have an affiliation with the Institute for Advanced Computing Applications and Technologies. I also was at Argonne for 17 years before I moved here about two years ago. Uh, I've been on the MPI forum since the very, very beginning, uh, including the meeting in Minneapolis that really kicked off the forum, as well as the meeting that Ken Kennedy called before that, that inspired a group of us to form the MPI forum. And most recently, I've been responsible as chair of the effort that produced the MPI 2.2 document. And my name is Rich Graham. I'm at uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory uh, in the Computer Science and Mathematics Division. I run a, a group here who's, who does uh, work on MPI and tools. Um, I've been at Oak Ridge for roughly three years. Before that, spent about eight years at uh, Los Alamos National Laboratory, um, doing a variety of things, including uh, including uh, a lot of work on MPI. Uh, actually, that's where Jeff Squires and myself met when we together started the Open MPI project. Um, in the context of the MPI forum, um, this is my first uh, first forum to be involved with. Uh, I'm chairing chairing this this effort. Yeah. So as as Rich mentioned here, uh, all all three of us really have been working together for for quite a long time. Um, Bill has uh, quite a large part to do with the MPI CH implementation as well. And so <laughs> this interview is going to be a little strange for me because I am actually quite familiar with and work with these guys quite a bit. So I'll just try and keep my mouth shut and ask properly leading questions and things like that. But let's uh, let's go ahead and start and get at least a little bit of background because every time uh, I, I talk to end users and system administrators and, and most recently at uh, Supercomputing 09 in uh, Portland, Oregon, it, it still amazes me how many people don't really know what MPI is. They know that it's, you know, something used in parallel computing and that it's, you know, a lot of applications use it and things, but they don't really know what it is. So, um, you know, Bill Rich, I wonder if you guys could give us the, the short rundown, you know, what does MPI stand for? What is it? And so on. Well, Jeff, the MPI is the message passing interface. It is a standard specification for a library that allows processes to communicate with each other. Um, it was developed by a diverse group of vendors, users, uh, and researchers to standardize what was a fairly well understood but very fragmented programming model of essentially passing messages between processes. Uh, and the standard uh, is a little schizophrenic in that um, it's targeted to sort of everybody. There's material in the standard for end users, there's material in the standard for tool developers, and there's material in the standard for library developers. Uh, in fact, one of its strengths has been its support for the uh, development of component uh, software, which has allowed people to build applications from libraries written uh, at other places. Uh, so, Richard, I wonder if you could give us a little bit behind the history and the intent behind MPI. Like, for example, I, I know this is the first forum that you've been involved with, and and Bill's been involved from the beginning. I got involved around MPI 2.0. But, you know, who who's the target audience? What's it for? You know, how do you see people using it and, and things like that? Because you've been around MPI for years and years and years. So, as Bill alluded to, uh, the, the MPI standard uh, – first became standard roughly 13 years ago, I think it was, 13, 14 years ago. 
um, and really intended in, intended to uh, to bring together um, to to bring to bring to bear a single a single form of, of message passing that, that that would be supported across by by all or by a wide range of of uh, hardware vendors, so that application developers and uh, tool writers and um, library developers could could rely on on writing a single a single implementation that that uh, they could have a high confidence that would work on, on all the platforms that they care care about and so really the intent the intent behind behind the effort was uh, as as with any standard effort is to uh, is to make is to put together a standard that's that's good across and is and and work has the potential to work well across a wide a wide range of, of hardware and software platforms so who exactly is responsible for the MPI standards document and, and what, what has gone on there? So we, we've talked about we have MPI 2.2 and MPI 3.0 is in the works and so on. But what, what exactly is the process there? Well, there is a, a, a forum. This is a group of individuals that represent organizations uh, that meet um, about every six to eight weeks. Uh, in the original MPI forum, we met every six weeks. Now we're meeting about every two months. The, the forum uh, is made up of people with um, expertise and interest in various areas of parallel computing in the technical space. And the forum is responsible for uh, producing a document. There is a organized uh, process for voting in sections that's very deliberative. Uh, we followed, in fact, the exact process that was used for high performance Fortran. In fact, in the original MPI forum, we even used the same hotel in uh, northern Dallas, which was a great place to encourage people to stick around and work out the standard. And this process of producing uh, written documents, which are then discussed and then read and at consecutive meetings voted on uh, with one vote per organization, uh, produces a process that by and large has created a fairly robust uh, document that uh, has had surprisingly few uh, inconsistencies or flaws, and not that it doesn't have any, but uh, it's turned out to be quite uh, quite effective. Um, in fact, the uh, MPI-1 document is now, I think, about 17, 16 or 17 years old um, and has uh, still been a pretty good document um, in terms of defining what MPI should be. MPI is you mentioned what it was used for and such, but uh, I did not get any uh, information in there about what its um, dominance is. Is it is it a really popular use in scientific computing, or is it not that common? Um, what are some of the would call a competitor to it? So, I would say there's essentially no competitor to it in scientific computing at the largest scale and on distributed memory platforms. For uh, shared memory platforms, uh, the primary competitor is probably OpenMP. And then uh, there are various uh, other uh, systems that have been produced either by individual vendors or research groups that have some um, smaller following, um, smaller, possibly very passionate. There certainly are things that some of these systems are better at than MPI, but if you look at uh, publications in parallel computing, you'll find that if they're using more than a handful of nodes um, and anything besides the most uh, embarrassingly parallel computations, they're probably running MPI. So in terms of the actual standards document, do you actually have to be like a member of the forum, a pay some support fee or anything like that or can anybody get their hands on this document to know what the true standard says 